of solemn black, nor windy suspiration of forced breath, no, nor the fruitful river in the eye, nor the dejected havior of the visage, together with all forms, moods, shapes of grief that can denote me truly, these indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within which passes show, these but the trappings and the suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to show these mourning duties to your father. But you must know your father lost a father, that father lost, lost his. And the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow, but to persever in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven. A heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled. We pray you, throw to earth this unprevailing woe and think of us as of a father. Mm. For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire, and we beseech you, bend you, to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye. Our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. Why, it is a loving and a fair reply. Be as ourself in Denmark. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. In grace whereof... No jocund health that Denmark drinks today, but the great cannon to the clouds shall tell. <laughs> and the kings roused, the heavens shall brew it again, respeaking earthly thunder. Come, away. solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Well, that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh, God. God. A weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seemed to me all the uses of this world. Fie on it. Fie. Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this, but two months dead, nay, not so much, not two. So excellent the king, it was to this, Hyperion to a satyr, so loving to my mother that he might not beteem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember. Why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on, and yet within a month, let me not think of it. Frailty, thy name is woman. Little one. For ere those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body like Niobe, all tears, why she, even she, oh God, a beast that once discourse of reason would have mourned longer, married with my uncle, my father. But no more like my father than I to Hercules within a month. Ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her galled eyes, she married, oh, most wicked spirit, to post with such dexterity to incestuous shits. to your lordship. I'm glad to see you well. Horatio, why did you forget myself? The same, my lord, and your poor servant ever. Sir, my good friend. 
I'll change that name with you. Uh, and what make you from Wittenberg, Correction? Marcellus. My good lord. <laughs> I'm very glad to see you. Good evening, sir. But what in faith make you from Wittenberg? A truant disposition, good my lord. I would not hear your enemy say so. <laughs> I know you are no truant. But what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I prithee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I have met my dearest foe in heaven or ever I'd seen that day? My father, methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. <laughs> I saw him once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw? Who? My lord, the king, your father. The king, my father. Season your admiration for a while within a tent ear till I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to oh, you. God's love, let me hear. Two nights together had these gentlemen in the dead waste in middle of the night been thus encountered. A figure like your father appears before them and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. This to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did, and I with them the third night kept the watch, whereas they had delivered both in time, form of the thing, each word made true and good, the apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. But w where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we watched. Did you not speak to it? Indeed, my lord, but answer made it none. It is very strange. As I do live, my honored lord, tis true. And we did think it writ down in our duty to let you know of it. Indeed, indeed, sirs. But this troubles me. What, looked he frowningly? A countenance more in sorrow than in anger. Pale or red? Nay, very pale. And fixed his eyes upon you? Most constantly. Oh, I would I had been there. It would have much amazed you. Very like, very like. I stayed it long? While one with moderate haste might count a hundred. Long, long, not when I saw His him. beard was grizzled, no? It was as I have seen it in his life, a sable silvered. I will watch tonight. Perchance uh, to a walk again. I warrant it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace, I pray you all. If you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still. I will requite your love so. Upon the platform twixt uh, eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our duty to your own. Your loves, as mine to you. some foul play. Would the night were come. Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes. Necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And sister, as the wind skips and fit and convoys assistant, do not sleep. Let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? <laughs> or Hamlet and the trifling of his favor, poet of fashion and a toy in blood. Forward, not permanent. Sweet, not lasting. The perfume and suppliance of the minute, no more. No more but so. Think it, no more. Perhaps he loves you now. 
But you must fear. His greatness weighed as well as not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. Then, if he says he loves you, it fits your wisdom so far to believe it, as he in his particular act and place may give his saying deed. Which is no further than the main voice of Denmark goes with all. Then, wayward loss, your honor may sustain, if with true credence here you list his song. Or lose your heart. May the chaste treasure open to his unnusted impetuity. Bear it if you be not. And keep you in the rear of your affection. Why shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart? But good, my brother, do not, as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst like a puffed and reckless libertine himself, the primrose path of dalliance treads and wrecks not his own reed. Oh, fear me not. Get here, Laertes. Stay too long. Aboard, aboard, for shame the wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory look no character. He give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Those friends thou hast in their adoption tried, grapple them unto thy soul with hoops of steel. But do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new hatched, unfledged courage. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy, rich, not gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day, Thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell, my blessing sees in this in thee. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lord. The time invites you. Go. Farewell, Ophelia. And remember well what I have said to you. It is in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. Farewell. What is Sophia he hath said to you? So please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. Marry, well be thought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you. And you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous. If it be so, as so tis put on me, and that in way of caution, I must tell you, you do not understand yourself so clearly as it behooves my daughter and your honor. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, my lord, of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? Pa, you speak like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe his tenders, as you call them? I do not know, my lord, what I should think. Mary, I will teach you. Think yourself a baby. To obtain these tenders to be true pay, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly, or not to crack the wind of the poor phrase running it thus. You'll tender me a fool. My lord, he hath importuned me with love, in honorable fashion. Hmm. I do know when the blood burns, how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. From this time forward, be something scanter of your maiden presence. Lord Hamlet. Believe so much in him that he is young, and with a larger tether may he walk than may be given you. In few, Ophelia, do not believe his vows. This is for all. I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you. 